When you think about structural engineering, most people's minds only go to the structural elements that are above the ground. So either the columns, walls, floors, or beams. It's not often that you actually think about the footing systems and how you interact with the soil. However, it's highly important that all structural engineers have some basic understanding of the structural mechanics of soil and what actual bearing failure actually means in different soil types. So I've got a practical example here where I'm about to demonstrate an actual bearing failure in a sandy material. So what are the different types of soils? We'll either have rock, which is a hard material, or you have cohesive or non-cohesive soils. So non-cohesive soils is similar to the sand. As you can see, it doesn't really join together and just forms individual grains. As opposed to a clay, we can make it more like a Play-Doh, so it can turn into a ball and it actually sticks together. These three types of founding materials behave very differently in a bearing failure. While a rock is more like one of those ones that are gonna fracture or crush, more like you would see a failure in such materials such as concrete, and how about a sand? We'll start off with this practical example of what a bearing failure is going to look like under a sandy material. So we'll get the pressure going and push it down. You'll see the soil around it start to heave up and move around. You can see it builds up around the sides as this moves into the ground. So what is happening here? As the load increases and you start to see a bearing failure, the object sinks into the soil essentially displacing the soil, causing that heaving around the outside. So let's reset this and see what's actually happening. So as the load increases, you start to see settlement and heaving around the outside. As a series of shear planes start to build up in the soil. These shear planes are a amount of soil that is getting displaced as the object is sunk into the ground. So depending on how much load is around it, is how much settlement and the angle of those shear planes. If you're enjoying this practical demonstration of bearing failure, don't forget to bear down on that like button. Not only does it help me out, but also gets it out to more engineers. Now let's keep learning about the different bearing failures and footing systems that you have in your structural designs. A clay or a cohesive soil will behave differently to sand. So as the load increases, it slowly compresses the clay and seeps out any water that's trapped inside the pores. And as that water slowly seeps out, this building slowly settles into the soil. And over time, that clay or cohesive soil increases with strength. So you get a slightly different failure mechanism. So as the building over time is increasing its bearing capacity as it's slowly settling into the soil. When we're doing our bearing design of our footings, throughout the level of acceptable settlement over time that the structure can handle. So it's more like a serviceability check that we do for deflecting beams, as any pressure that is applied to the soil will cause some level of displacement to resist those actions. So what type of footing systems do you have at your disposal to resist these actions? Well, the first one, the most common one, is a pad footing. Now, pad footing has a single isolated point load from above that's pressing down, and it's a big enough size to resist the actions from that point load. So you have an acceptable level of settlement. Or if you've got a big long wall, generally under those walls, you'll have a thing called the strip footing. Essentially, it's just a big beam in the ground and they can be also spread the load out so that line load is not too much pressure on the soil. Or if you've got a big core, so you've got a series of walls coming down, you might have a big raft that will do a series of things. It firstly helps distribute that force over an area, but also helps have a corrective action. So when the core tries to rotate, it's a big enough size to help resist those overturning moments that are happening in your core. So another really common system is a pile. Now a pile is slightly different to our pad footing, which is just relying on the bearing actions. So a pile is an action of both its bearing at the end and the skin friction on the side of it. It helps resist the actions from the loads above. And of course, the deeper you drill those piles, the more bearing capacity you have around it and the more confinement pressure, so the more skin friction you'll get. This also acts in reverse. So for example, if you have big overturning moments that you need to resist those tension forces, that skin friction helps pull up some of the soil around it, essentially pulling a cone of soil out to help tie down your building. So another footing system similar to a pile is a screw pile. Now a screw pile has a little propeller on the end of it and they screw it into the soil. And what that allows you to do is work out what is the actual bearing pressure you're achieving from it by how much effort you need to screw that into the soil it also provides that uplift capacity as well, 
But the good thing about a screw pile is as soon as you've installed it, you can put load on top of it as opposed to a pile, which generally needs to be cast and set before it can actually support any load, unless it's a driven pile, of course. Another important mechanic about understanding soil is how your structure is going to behave under an earthquake. As any lateral forces your structure may see can either be made better or worse depending on the substructure of the soil. So if you've got a deep soft soil such as a clay, it'll behave a lot worse during an earthquake than such as a sand or a rock. Now why is this? Well a clay when it starts to rock backwards and forwards, you have shock waves going backwards and forwards through the stratum of the soil that exacerbates the, the forces the earthquake will apply to your structure. And you have other mechanics, such as a previous video I did about liquefaction, which happens more in your sandy materials. So if you've got a high water table, structures can actually sink into the soil as the soil turns more into a liquid from the shaking actions and that high water table. The best material they can have for any earthquake is the rock material, as when it shakes the building, it's only oscillating based on the shaking of the soil and you don't get any of those additional shock waves that you'll get in those softer materials. If you're interested in supporting the channel further, I actually set up a Patreon with links in the below description. So what does it get you? It gets you more access to me and some future members only Q&As. Hopefully I see you over there. And as always, if you have any topics you wish me to cover, don't forget to ask them in the below comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ding that bell to get all updates. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.